this information. Are there any copyright issues there? Uh, not as long as you demonetize it. <laughs> so okay. I took the monetization off, so there's no way you can do that. Now, when you go to upload the video, you can also say, make it a, a, an unlisted video. So you have to have the exact URL to get to it. So no one's going to stumble onto this and say, copyright, copyright. You know, it's, it's going to be you know, just my students. That's it. Okay. <clears throat> just your students who are complaining about copyright. Hopefully, you're like they have room to complain. <laughs> yeah, yeah, for sure. So you can see that the uh, oops, I'm using the wrong mouse here. There we go. Um, there's the video there. I'll go ahead and close that. Any questions on on the lecture video at all? Yeah. So why did you choose uh, is instead of using embedded and doing an external? Uh -huh. so, right, so I chose, I chose an external link, that's correct. So what I, I did was I, I um, uh, uh, added uh, a section and I chose an external link, that is correct. Okay, what's the advantage when you want to do embedded and external? Yep, I'll show you how to do that. So, oh, the advantage to um, uh, the external is it's just, it's just for the lecture videos because I need to have a section for it. Okay. But for the lab, Instructions. Here we go. Lab instructions. Then what I have is embedded videos all throughout here. So, for instance, uh, create your virtual environment. Um, how to install VirtualBox. Uh, what I do is, anytime that there's a video for it, I put the word video and I make it a link. Now, some people choose to actually embed a small picture of the video where they can click on it. Do whichever you want. Now, our labs are so long then I'm afraid if I add a big old square for 10 different videos, it's just gonna make it too long for the, the, the student and they're gonna lose interest. <laughs> so I'm always thinking of ways to keep the student's interest, you know, and, and to never lose that focus. Uh, so for instance, if I click on how to install uh, server, you know, 2016, it clicks over here, and then I have my video, you know, go from there. So on um, this one, I don't have um, a video of myself in here, and that's because I had that in the lecture. So I didn't feel that it was necessary in the embedded videos. Uh, but uh, that is certainly, oh look, another commercial. <laughs> that is certainly something you can do as well. So, yes? Have you tried using the video recorder back downstairs? I have not because I always had you know, really good equipment on my own. Um, so tell, tell me about that, I'm not even aware. I don't. I don't really know anything about it. I've never used it. I know you have to you know, you can make videos downstairs and they do that and record and all kinds of stuff. Oh, cool. And they can provide some support. So, we can go use it and see if they'll help us. Does anybody use that? Yeah. Anybody use the video stuff downstairs? No? No. I've known people who have. Do they have a good experience? <clears throat> good experience? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, and they have, uh, they have one of those transparent. Uh, Flash sheet things oh, that you can write yeah. on to and yeah. nice. fun stuff. So okay. I have worked with Michael Lannis, but uh, that was a separate kind of thing. Okay. Okay. Yeah. What what I would do is I would line up um, my eight lectures and I would just record one right after another. <laughs> you know, at fifteen to twenty minutes, you know, per lecture, it's it, it, you know it's it's a day yeah. worth of work. You know, especially if something that you've been teaching already before, so it, it's not like you have to learn. All this stuff. Uh, just line it up and, and get it done. And then after that, I, I can create my labs and then embed the videos into those labs. Did somebody else have a question? Right? Sorry, sorry. Yeah. Okay. All right. Um, so that's how I embed them in there. And what you can do is if you go down to edit uh, HTML, it's pretty simple. Click edit. And you type in whatever it is you're going to type. And then I'll, I'll just select this area, for instance. I'll click Lab Instructions. I'll click this link at the top here, Insert Quick Link. And then I'll scroll down to where it says URL. And then you just type in the URL, and then you click Insert. And when you're done, it'll turn into this other color with an underline on it, just like any other you know, website that you've gone to. Like it'll, and then what I do is I go in and I you know, make it bold and I change the font size and 
you know, stuff like that. Uh, does anybody want me to, to show that again? Did that go too fast? Yeah. No. Sorry, are we good? Okay. Pretty easy. I know you guys have all are used to editing these things anyway, so it's not going to come too fast. I will, I will mention one thing though. Yeah. So, um, the, most of your links were great and you had descriptive um, words for the link. Try to avoid using the actual URL as the text of the link. Correct. So it's better to say Microsoft Eval Center as the text of the link than HTTP colon slash 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 slash. Because it's an accessibility issue for someone who's using a screen reader and when they're skipping from so URL to URL. That's got really tough on some Yeah, sure, absolutely. Yeah, I don't think that I, I did that on any of mine, but um, uh, if I did, I'd be happy to have somebody point it out to me. But yeah, I tried to. Yeah, uh, there. Yeah. Oh, no, this is not a video. This is actually. No, no, I mean, I mean for all of us. Oh, 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 yeah, I, I was only doing it for the, and this is part of the problem is um, these, uh, the 240, 288, 289, we had four or five different editor, you know, people that were all adding, yeah. <laughs> adding stuff in. I and then I went in and put my videos in afterwards. Yeah. But uh, so some of the stuff um, I'll, I'll have to clean up. Yeah, and also avoid using words like here, click here, things like that for the same reason. Oh, okay. Because somebody who's skipping through with a screen reader, they're just going to get the text on the link. And then they're going to go to the next link. And, and if it's like here, then you right. have to do more That's stuff to actually right. figure out what the link is. So you're saying that this link, or this one here, where it says how to download, that's fine. It would say video, how to download ISOs from Microsoft Evaluation Center. And the person using the screen reader could either skip to the next link, which would say Oracle Virtual Box, uh -huh. or they could click on the link, essentially. Okay. Um, yeah. But if it gets to here, then right. they say, well, I don't know where that's going to take me, and so I have to. Right. Do some other stuff to try to figure out what that is actually worth. To. So you're saying this is good, but the one above it is bad. Yeah, the, the one, one above it is bad because if it's a long URL in particular, it's going to be colon slash slash w microsoft com slash e slash en dash us slash eval center slash. Yeah, yeah, that's that's pretty painful. Well, so in three, the link should be on virtual box and get rid of right here. Right, right. No, that's a good point. Mm -hmm. All right, so uh, yeah, we'll have to go in and clean up uh, some of that stuff. So very good. But uh, that is how you embed the, uh, the videos. But um, how do we get them there? So um, I know that uh, we are probably running short on time. So uh, I will try to do this uh, quickly for us here. Um, if you go to Tools and go to Options, uh, here's where your option to record on Trek or on EVI. So if you want to record your camera, you have to be on .trek. And then this is the temporary folder that's set up by default, which is fine. You can also choose to capture or not capture, keyboard input, uh, later windows, disable the screensaver. All these things are checked by default, by the way. Uh, here is the microphone. It shows, obviously, that I'm talking and my microphone is picking it up. And it also shows what the webcam is going to look as well. If you have multiple microphones and multiple webcams, then you know obviously you can choose from the drop down which one uh, that you want. Or you can say don't record. Here's your capture frame rate. You want to change that to be 15. So that's, uh, that's really important for videos that you post up on the web. If you're not posting them on the web, you're just double clicking on them in Windows, then 30 is fine. Uh, you can also change some hotkeys like um, F9 right now is the record and pause. I find that F9 is difficult to find while I'm trying to teach and do things at the same time. So I changed mine to be the control key. So uh, you know I just uh, got rid of this and just hit the button that says control. And then uh, the control stops and starts my stuff. Now for those of you who use the, the control key in your commands, that's not obviously a good idea. <laughs> uh, under program, let's see if there's anything that really sticks out here. Well, there's a few things that you can uh, check out, but uh, nothing that really sticks out. Uh, so what I'll do is I'm just going to record a few seconds, and then we're going to go into Camtasia. Uh, if you make a mistake and decide you, there's just no way you can save this video, you can just click delete, and it'll just go away. If you need to pause, that's obviously an easy thing to do as well. You always want to have at least two monitors, uh, because you can have the recording toolbar on one, and you can have the recording you know, that you're doing on the other. If you don't have two monitors, then, <laughs> then you can set it so it just disappears while you're recording. So I'll click stop, and when you do, then our Camtasia program itself comes up. 
So what I'm going to offer you, since obviously we're, we're limited on time, is uh, anybody who, you know, I, I went too fast, or some features that you want to see that I haven't, you know, shown you, I'll be happy to um, have you uh, email me and we can do a one-on-one -on -one together, or a group, you know, whatever it is you guys want. Okay, so this is what it looks like once it's together. You can see the video in the bottom right-hand corner. If I want to, I can make the video bigger or smaller. I can make it take up the whole screen, you know, for a section of time if I want. And then I can, you know, hit play. Let's see here. I turn my, my sound off, so I turn it back on. Looks like you have some clipping. So what? Clipping. Audio clipping. Yeah. All right. So the bottom part is my... Uh, the uh, video and the top part is the sound. One of the things I like to do first thing is you heard kind of how fuzzy that was, right? Get the yeah. Sound up all, all the way here. There we go. That's better. All right. So listen to that. So well, there we go. It sounds very fuzzy. So what I do is under audio effects is I go to noise removal, drag it down, and listen how much better it sounds. So all, all that fuzz, all those backgrounds go. <laughs> Uh, you rephrase on this if you need to edit anything? Yeah, yeah. So let's just say that if we needed to edit something out, what you do is you go over to this little um, split button there and you click on split, right? And you got to make sure that, that both of them are selected, otherwise, it, you know, it'll be all disjointed. So we split that and then we drag this over here and then we um, select again and then we click split. And then we highlight these two areas. I held down the control key to, hold, to get both of them. And then I click delete. So I've gotten rid of that, that garbage part. Now I select and I just drag it over. And now type together. So I got rid of my breaths. So I got rid of my mistakes. So you just click split on both sides. Now if you're using AVI, you're only going to see one. But if you see if you do track with the camera, you're going to see two of these bars right here instead of one. So like I said, one's the video and the other's the sound. You can, you can also spread out the, the green box and the red box on either side of the thumb. You can spread those out to select a range and then hit the scissors to cut out that chunk of video. Right. You can, so if you see this little zoom, I think that's what you're talking about, right? It's the zoom, so you can make it bigger. Mm -hmm. So the, the zoom is really helpful because if either your words are too close together and, and you don't want to accidentally cut off one, but you want to cut the other out, you zoom out so that way it spreads this out so you can... See, I'll, I'll know the cut right here now. When it was all bunched together, you couldn't really see that. Yeah, that's what I thought. That's what kind of my question. Well, and like if you drag, drag the green, drag the green block to select the range. Oh yes, that's true too. Yeah, you can. Uh, this yeah. one right here. Yeah, just right. Yeah, yeah, you can do that as well, and you can cut out that way. Yeah. Yep. And then once you have everything the way you want it, um, and by the way, you, you can have the, the camera, you know. Um, big in one section and small in the other. So like on uh, section two, I can say, hey, I, I don't want to have myself that big. I just want to, you know, so you can see what it will do is it goes uh, big on one and then small on the other. Let's see here. Yeah. Or you could get like smaller and smaller. Yeah, that's true. Aggressive. So you see I'm small there, I'm big there, you know. So you don't have to have the camera size, the whole, you know, the same size the whole way. All right, so when I'm all done, this is a, an important part. You have the option to upload directly to YouTube, but what I like to do is choose local file, because what it'll do is it'll save a copy for me locally, and then I can upload it into YouTube. So I'll click local file. Uh, see here, trial version. I may not be able to do this. With, oh, watermark, okay. I, I did not install the key on this one because it was just a temporary thing. So with this one, it's actually putting in the, uh, the watermark. Um, does anybody know who to contact to get the Camtasia licenses we have at PCC? No, it's terrible. Andy Free? I'm sorry, what? Andy Free? Andy Free? I don't, I thought I don't think that's what you Melanie Greenman. Yeah, I think it's Melanie. Yeah. 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 So we have 150 something licenses. So uh, you can, otherwise, this costs, I think, 300 and something dollars. Yeah, it's pretty expensive. Yeah. Uh, so you can get a copy. You can install it on your own personal computer. Um, but when you're done, obviously, since there's a limited amount of licenses, you know, you want to keep that going. All right, so um, the custom production settings, click next. All right, so I like to choose MP4. That gives me the best quality and the smallest size file. 
Uh, you can choose WMB, don't recommend that, don't recommend the API uh, for, you know, uh, especially if you're using uh, YouTube because it just makes it so big. All right, so next, then I use, uh, uncheck the box that says use uh, produce with controller. When you do produce with controller, there we go, uh, what it does is it uh, creates a whole bunch of extra files that allows you to view it without a web page, so you don't need that. Uh, size, once again, if you are, if you put your display up properly, it's going to be 1360 by 768. There we go. Oops. I did, I did not set my um, display settings to that, so that's why it's not letting me do it. Uh, because obviously it would have made this whole screen look different, so I didn't want to do that to you. So uh, under video size, just make sure it says it the same as your, your window size, which is 1360 by 768. Uh, video settings, I like to set the quality up to the highest level. It says, hey, it's going to you know use a little bit more resources to do that, but I think it, that it's worth it. Um, then your frame rate is going to be uh, 15. If you set it at 15 in the recording side, you should actually say 15 there as well. And then audio, uh, the default 128 uh, kilobits per second is typically just fine. So uh, you don't really have to do anything there. Uh, then it's going to save the file. And I'm going to put it on the desktop just so it's easy to find. Uh, there we go. And finish. So if you have a long video, it takes a long time. If you don't, uh, and it also depends on the speed of your computer. This is an SSD hard drive with 8 gigabytes of RAM, so it's, it's pretty decent. All right, so now it's, uh, it's going to show the, this is the finished video right here. So you can see that um, it has the watermark on it because it was a you know, non-licensed version. <laughs> Otherwise, it wouldn't show that. Uh, so I'll, now that I've got my video, I can go ahead and upload it. I've already created my channel, right? So I can go in and I can click on this little picture of this uh, create a video or post and say upload a video. And now I'm going to go to a new page. And I do not have access to this. There we go. For some reason, it's not. Uh, you have the photon property to get one of these licenses? No, I got it as part I did too. Mm. You're going to have to get the kickback to the department chair, though. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so now it's not, say, not the one who's retiring. <laughs> <laughs> you want the one who's actually going to be here. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, I'm going to change from public to unlisted, so that way, because obviously this is a crappy video. <laughs> uh, but I'll click on select files to upload. I'll choose, uh, let's see here. Desktop. 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 It's not under document. Oh, there we go. You're right. Yep, untitled. I did put it in a folder. I forgot. Okay, so now it's uploading it. And here I can put in a, a, a description, say, hi, it's me, you know, whatever it is you want. Keywords. Um, keywords typically, you know, if you're like in my case, I'll put it in Windows Server 2016 or 2019 or you know, whatever it is that I put down. Don't do more than uh, about 15 keywords because um, you'll end up getting an error. Uh, you know, when you try to upload it, um, but um, uh, also it may make, make it even more difficult to find if you have too many keywords. Uh, so I try to do, you know, 15 to 10 to 15, somewhere in that range. <clears throat> and then I click done. All right, so now if I wanted to share this video, I would um, take this link and I could email it to people or I could uh, take this link and pa paste it into my labs or wherever it is I need to put it. Uh, yeah, in my PCC course. I can also share it to any one of these uh, different uh, social media sites, which obviously I'm not going to do. Uh, and then if I want to actually view it online, I can just click here and it'll open up and show us our, see, show us our crappy video. So we're now watching this online instead of locally on my computer. So that's how you upload the, uh, the video. 
So, anybody have any questions about all that? There's a lot of stuff in a short time, amount of time. Time questions. <laughs> Way time. <laughs> Ten minute break, come back for the SAC meeting, mm -hmm. ask Bob the question. All right, sounds now. great. Okay. Thanks, Bob. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs>